Amen. Thank you, Greg. Parents, when we dismiss today, be sure to pick your children up in the chapel as soon as we announce pickup. Uh, we have a Pathways lunch in that old chapel, so we need to make sure the children are picked up promptly today, and then you can come back in here with your children and carry on your fellowship time. So it would just take a couple of minutes. It's just around the corner. No big deal. We just like to keep things flowing and in order, and then we'll dismiss the Pathways group. We have a large group this time around, as we usually do, of new families coming into the river, and we look forward. Amen. And we... In about three weeks, we'll bring them up front and welcome them in, and then they'll begin to serve in new ways and different ways uh, as the Lord has called and led them to areas of service. If you're looking for a place to serve the Lord, uh, you feel like that God is nudging you, moving you, pushing you, that there's just something in you that's not released and getting out, please let somebody know. Let Betsy or... Uh, the hayloft or myself, know your desires, and we will find a place to plug you in to serve in the kingdom of the Lord. We always have opportunities and open doors. Somebody say covenant. That word just keeps coming up in this house, and we are sensitive to do what the Lord would like for us to do. Amen? So uh, I'm going to preach uh, today. I realize the time is uh, not going to allow me to what I would like to do for the sake of the plans and all of that. So I'm going to be sensitive to your time, and um, you may get part one of a seven-part series <laughs> of what the Lord's given me. So... Uh, what is it they say, why do today what you can put off till tomorrow? <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> but uh, Pastor Chris Fagan preached Wednesday night. The power went off, and we had the most awesome worship time with about two-thirds of our electricity going around here. Uh, but God moved in this place, and if you were watching a uh, live stream, it cut off because of the difficulty with the electric, and then I think about 8.15, it came back on. I don't know if anybody uh, was still around online, but uh, the, the last few minutes of his message may be online. I can't guarantee much, but I'll tell you, he preached on the Almighty God and his covenant with us and how your prayers, your worship, your praise goes up to the heavens. There are things you can say and do on the earth that literally move in an upward manner and take their place in the heavenly dimension. There is a spiritual dimension. That's why we're here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We don't open a church for business or entertainment. Spirit realm is real. And when you break off evil spirits, Life gets better. The Holy Spirit flows. When you get delivered, you, f you get filled up with the Holy Ghost. If you don't get filled up with the Holy Ghost after a deliverance, those demons, the Bible said, can go get seven more and come back. So when you get deliverance, you need to be ready and fill up that tank with the Holy Ghost and be being filled, the Bible says, every day with the power and the Spirit of the living God. And when the Spirit of God dwells in you, it'll give life to your mortal body. It'll empower you to do the impossible things. And those are not always natural things. God doesn't empower men like he did Samson very often, but he did do that, and he was able to lift and, and war and battle and do strength feats that no one had ever done before or since. He empowered Noah and he built an ark. And if you don't think that's a job, Come on. Whew, go down there to the ark experience and look at those beams. Come out on the job with me and help me lift some beams. It's work. It's hard. 
And Noah and his three sons built an ark. I mean a big one, not like a little canoe fishing boat. Go down there and see it. It's the length of, Simeon can tell you, it's the length of three football fields. Whoa. That's a boat. Amen? But that's because God empowers mankind to do things you never thought possible. I've seen people get the Holy Ghost and just immediately start playing an instrument. Amen. People that were shy get the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, they want to preach the house down. Just can't wait to get up in front of people and preach. People that couldn't pray out loud get the Holy Ghost, and they're the loudest one in the prayer room. I've seen God do some amazing things with people who were filled with the Spirit. Amen. Spirit of God can empower you to lose weight. Spirit of God can empower you to do things that you used to say, I will never do. All of a sudden, you want to do because of the power of the Holy Ghost. So we're laying up treasures in heaven. I use that scripture in the dedication today, instructing these parents to be sure in all of your getting, in all of your buying, in all of your storing up, in all of your saving. I told uh, Ben and Lindsay when Simeon was born, I said, I'm going to start him a savings account on his first birthday. And we're going to make a deposit into that savings account. And when he turns 18, we're going to see how that plays out on interest for him by doing that every birthday 18 times. I'll really be glad when he's 19. Just kidding. Just kidding. I love it. I don't know what we're going to do for Selah. We'll figure something out. My wife says we're going to do the same thing. I don't know. That's, that's multiplication. <clears throat> so anyway, I want to talk to you today about money. I asked the Lord, I said, what could I preach on Sunday that would get everybody shouting to the rafters? And he said, talk about money. And man, they won't be able to stay in their seats. No, he did not. I just misrepresented the Lord of glory. I'm sorry. He did not say that. But he did say in his word, the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. I hope when you touch that black box on the wall on your way out that you just get a little jittery like Woo, man. Yeah, get plum giddy. Just giggle. Laugh out loud. Ha <laughs> ha! How's Mike Hamilton? Where are you? Laugh. I love his laugh. <laughs> Isn't that good? I love that. The Lord loveth a cheerful. Giver. We've heard, how many of you ever heard that verse before? How many of you ever heard somebody say, you can't outgive God? Those things are so true. But is it hard for us as humans sometimes to give? I'd be lying if I said it was just fun and easy and cheerful all the time. No, it's not. But laying up treasure in heaven is not economics. The kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of heaven is not built on capitalism. Capitalism has its good points. And, and you know, earning and, and trading and being able to buy and sell and having a, a cash currency and all of the things that makes the economy move and, and go, uh, interest rates and all of these things in the economy that we live in has its good points to a point. When evil men get in charge of that economy, then it squashes out what it was intended to be. But 
Laying up treasure in heaven is not economics, it's seedonomics. Have you ever heard of seedonomics? How many studied seedonomics in college? Okay. I borrowed that term from a, a guy who wrote a book called Seedonomics about how when God gets in the economy, God gets in your equation, all of a sudden you're no longer adding and subtracting. How many know that in order to keep a checkbook balanced, you have to be able to add and subtract? If you enter multiplying and dividing into your checkbook, you're going to get in trouble. It's adding and subtracting. Mathematicians say amen. It's simple. Adding and subtracting. If you subtract more than you add, you get this notice from the bank. Your check did not clear insufficient funds. I've gotten those. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it. My adding and subtracting was not good. Or something happened, you know. On a rare occasion, the bank's adding and subtracting, right. you know, it wasn't so good. Right. But when you get into laying up treasure in heaven, you get into multiplication. It's a whole different ball game. you got to learn to multiply. Now, you learn to add and subtract probably in the first grade, maybe even kindergarten. Simeon's four, and he can add a whole lot of single-digit and double-digit numbers already. But he can't quite multiply yet too much. But I'll teach him, and he'll be doing that in a few months. He'll learn to multiply. So you learn to add and subtract, and then you get into God's economy, and he wants to teach you to multiply. How many know what the first commandment from God to a human was? No, it was not through Moses. It was to Adam and Eve when he said to them, multiply. I like that. Come on, God. He said, I'm going to give you and Eve something to do. I want you to multiply. Nope, don't want you to add. Nope, don't want you to subtract. Sure don't want you to divide. Now, mankind since that time has learned how to divide, 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 divide. And I hate division, and God... Hates he that sows discord, division. God hates it. I'm telling you, God is a God of love, but you don't want to mess with his hate side. God does hate. Hate's not the opposite of love. No. The opposite of love is to ignore. God's never ignored anybody. But he has loved a lot of folks and hated a lot of folks. He said, Jacob, have I loved? And Esau, have I hated? How many want to be a Jacob? You better raise your hand. <laughs> or you weren't paying attention. <laughs> what are you thinking about? Get off your phone. Hey, you want to be a Jacob? <laughs> you do not want to be an Esau. Amen. Amen. So God said, multiply. Thank God. They did. I'm here because Adam and Eve multiplied. Yes, sir. You're here, and I like you. Yes, sir. I'm glad you're here. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad, you're here. I'm glad they multiplied. Eight billion people walk planet Earth today because one man and one woman multiplied and did what the first commandment said to do. Amen? It's a good commandment. So God made animals and crops and trees and all these things, flowers and all these things. And he made them to multiply. Amen? You get a weed in your garden, if you don't mess with it, you'll get two weeds. And 10 and 50 and 500. Amen? You buy a male rabbit and a female rabbit and put them in a cage and give them enough food and a few days and you'll have little baby rabbits. Amen? Chickens, pigs, cows, dogs, cats. All the time you see ads on television, spay and neuter your cats and dogs. Spay and neuter your cats and dogs. Why? Because they're doing what God told them to do. 
multiply. Amen. So my message title today is Blessed or More Blessed. Blessed or More Blessed. How many want to be blessed? How many want to be more blessed? You're scared to raise your hand. I saw you. You're like, ah, there's a catch to this. I have read the Bible, and I can tell you on good ground, God loves more. He just loves it. He loves more. He, he loves to go over and above. And people who know God and love God just love to do more. We have these two Christian ladies that clean our home. For us, every other week, we, we have a home cleaning service. What? Oh. Hey. Uh, my, my screens are not working. So, I'll laugh with you after I watch the video. So, <laughs> these two Christian ladies clean our home, okay? They're right here in our congregation, and they do more than we ask them to do because God has trained them and showed them his way of doing things. And they, can I tell you one of their secrets? It's kind of private. But they fold the toilet paper at the end and put a little symbol stamp on it like these fancy hotels. They don't get paid to do that. We didn't, and the paper towels, and we didn't, we didn't ask them to do that. It's just more. I love it when there's more. You, you rent a hotel room, and there's a mint on the pillow. You didn't ask for that. It wasn't in the contract. You didn't, you probably paid for it, but you would have paid the same. You would have paid the same, mint or no mint, right? But you, you like the mint. Oh, yeah, More. God fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. And they had 12 baskets left over. I heard somebody say one time they, they figured that that little boy had 12 people to feed. And he realized he wasn't going to have enough. So he gave it to Jesus. Let Jesus feed 5,000. Then he had a basket for all of his 12 that would be about like Jesus. I, I just think that that makes a lot of sense. I wasn't there. You weren't either, so don't argue with me. You got no case. Uh, Acts 20 and 35. I have showed you all things. How that so laboring you ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. How many like to receive? I, some of y'all are lying. <laughs> are your arms broke? Don't sit there and act like you don't like to receive. Come on. If you don't like to receive, quit playing the lottery, for crying out loud. You ain't kidding me. People love to receive. If they didn't, sales ads wouldn't say free. Free. They, th they know if they yell free long enough, they'll get you to come in there. And the trick is, it ain't free. No, it, it, it costs somebody something for you to have everything that you have. Life isn't free. Freedom isn't free. Food isn't free. Welfare isn't free. Right? Everything costs everybody something in this earth. So we love to receive. I love to receive. Christmas is fun. It's fun to give and fun to receive. 
And it is blessed to receive. So if you walk up to some Christian and you say, how you doing, man? They say, blessed and highly favored. Why do they say blessed? Because of the things they receive. That's what we call blessed. The things we have, the things we get, the things we can lay up, handle, taste, touch, feel, enjoy our things and our money We see that as blessed, not to mention health and peace of mind and salvation and all the other things. For the sake of today, we'll just stay with the natural monetary part of this. But you are blessed if you have money in your wallet. Amen? I think I got some money, some cash in my wallet. Most people don't care about cash a lot, but I like it. I mean, I don't love it, but I like it. Amen. The love of money is the root of all evil. So I, got, I can't dare get into the love of that stuff. But I do like to have a little cash because it'll get you stuff. It'll get things done. It'll make people want to do this or that. I saw a sign on a, a friend of mine had a sign in his kitchen. It said, money isn't everything, but it keeps the kids in touch. Look at somebody say, I want to be more blessed. I would think it wouldn't be a bad idea if the river people, instead of saying, how are you doing? I'm blessed. Say, how are you doing? Say, I'm more blessed. Because it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I had a couple in the church approached me about a year ago or maybe two years ago. I don't remember. It was sometime before yesterday. And, uh, and they said, Pastor, we ran into a, a financial snag. We, we, ran, we found out we were going to have to be out a lot of money for a, a certain issue and situation. And we decided to give. So into our dilemma. Get out in front of it. Multiply instead of add. And, and they gave somebody a big sum of money, like a lot of money. And they said, you know what happened? No. We got a promotion. Got a big pay raise. And they said, it just struck us so funny that we just laughed. We just like, this is crazy. And, and the first paycheck they got, they took the extra and gave it to a family in the church. Just gave it away. You see, you know what happened? I, said, I can imagine. It's the funniest thing happened. My husband got a bonus at work. Like thousands of dollar bonus, not, not a couple hundred, thousands. And you know what we did? We gave it away. And they were laughing. They were like, this is so fun. This is hilarious. This is cheerful giving. We love it. It's amazing. And it just just snowballed. I mean, it just... And God took care of their need. God took care of their issue. The situation resolved itself. and, And they never had to worry or want in that situation. And it was, it's, it's so fun to hear people talk about you can't outgive God. Try it. You just can't do it. You can't do it. I don't understand it. It makes no sense. But God, he doesn't have to make sense. He doesn't have to check with Wall Street. He doesn't have to check and see what the interest rates are. He knows what you need, when you need it, how you need it, where you need it. He'll take care of you. You can lay up treasure in heaven. You can put money in a little black box at 2190 Coon Path Road. You can punch money into your text-to-give number and watch it go to a heavenly dimension it's amazing. Yes, sir. Yes. Blows my mind. I don't know how it happens. 
we were sitting over there in that little barn, breathing bat smells. Bill, I don't know how it happened. Seven years ago, we had our 4th of July in this building under the roof with no platform. We, were, we set some speakers up in here on 4th of July on the ground. How many were in that 4th of July in this room? We had a fire watch. A firefighter from Fairfield County came over and stood back there. Where, uh, yeah, Greenfield Township. And uh, stood about where Willie's sitting back there. I don't think it was that day. But anyway, seven years later, and you can't hardly find a seed in here. We didn't have any money. I mean, I'm really. Like, you think I'm kidding, but no, we didn't have any money. They told us we needed a, you know, a down payment on a loan. And we are like... Okay, we'll, we'll be back when we get a down payment. And the first year, Krista Joe, people gave $100,000 in that little old barn over there. The first year, one year. You can trust God. You can trust God. I mean, some families, you know, it might have been $100. It might have been 500 It might have been 5000 It might have been 10000 But... Everybody did their part and gave, and God came through, and we secured that loan, and we built this building, and in seven years, we've outgrown it. I trust him because he heard my prayer. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. I sought the Lord, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he answered. You hear me? You can trust God. So next week, I'm going to teach on the four most frequently asked questions about tithing. So if you don't like that and you don't want to hear that, then you'll need to bring some earplugs or get up and walk out when the preaching starts. <laughs> Not really. But if you're interested in learning what the Bible says and doing what the Bible says, I'll try to help answer your questions. So I want to leave you with this today. When we talk about giving, first you've got to be a gracious receiver. Some of us have to learn how to swallow our pride and just say, well, thank you. And if you didn't need it, don't say, I don't need it. Because you don't know what you need. God knows what you need. And he, he wouldn't have sent somebody to you to give you that $50 bill if he didn't believe you needed it. You might need it for your heart. You might just need to receive the love and, whoo, thank you. Wow, I receive it. Bless you. You're more blessed. And I'm blessed to receive it. And just let it go at that. And you may turn around and somebody walk to you and say, I really need $50 and I don't know what to do. I, I just felt like I need to ask you if you could help me pray about it. And you say, yeah, I'll pray about it. Here it is. And just give it to them and be now you're talking happy. Now you're talking fun. Now you're talking laughing. And God, you are so amazing. You are so cool. I didn't have $50. I didn't need $50. But you knew I needed $50 because somebody was going to come to me who did need $50. Right? Why don't we just trust God? It's fun to let God use you as a vessel. But I want to leave you with this. You cannot give what you don't have. So if you're sitting there and you're saying, Pastor, my bank account is down to nothing, then stop. Stop thinking about money. If you don't have $50 to give, if you don't have $800 to give, if you don't have $20,000 to give, stop fretting over about what you don't have. God has never asked somebody to give what they don't have. Too many people are upset because of money they don't have. Well, the, the worst thing in the world that can happen to you is you to have a bunch of money to worry about. But worse than that 
is to worry about money you don't even have. When they came to Peter and John in Acts chapter 3 and the man was begging for money, Peter looked at him and he said, silver and gold have I none. He wasn't upset about it. He wasn't fretting about it. He wasn't mad at God about it. He just didn't have it. I don't have it. I can't give it. Oh, oh, but I, I just happened to think that there's something I do have. So, such as I have. See, God, God don't want poor people playing the Pentecostal lottery. The, the name it, claim it lottery. Give me $1,000 and you'll get 10000 God don't want people, poor people playing the lottery like that. No. He don't want you stressed about what you don't have. You know what he wants? He wants you to lay up treasure in heaven with what you do have. And if you're poor like Peter and John, just wait a few days. Because I read chapter 4 and 5 and 6, and it said the people brought, sold houses and brought the entire price of a house. Well, today that's like three or $400,000, Rod, something like that. A couple hundred thousand at the minimum, pretty much, around here. Hey, Amen. You get one bedroom and a path <laughs> nowadays for a couple hundred thousand. Sad, isn't it? But they sold houses. Now, I don't know if it was the houses they lived in. I didn't really say. Didn't get specific. But they brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So Peter and John, if the next day would have said, silver and gold have I none, they'd have been lying. <laughs> but they gave what they did have, and God could trust them yes. with the money of all the people that God moved on to give. Yes, sir. You might have a hug, a smile. A prayer, yes, a helping hand, a, a lawnmower, yeah. a pie, some cookies, a scripture. Come on, Paul. I don't know what you have, but whatever you have, that's what God wants. He doesn't want the stuff you don't have. So quit fretting about that. Quit comparing yourself to somebody down the road. Quit fussing about it. And if you got it, give it. Amen? I can't give what you have, and you can't give what I have, but I can sure give what I have. And when you give it all away, when you just tell God it's all yours, and you dedicate it to him, and you lay it on the altar, and you let it go, and you lay up treasure in heaven, watch God do for you amazing things that you've never imagined. There's one amen. Amen. Seedonomics. Plant a grain of corn and expect in three months, or ever how long corn takes, I forget. About 100 days. Does that sound right? Expect to go out in your yard and look on that stalk and find that grain of corn and get it. Is that how God works? Does anybody here grow a garden? You, bread, am I... Am I off a little bit on that? You know, you plant a grain of corn and you're going to get a stalk. And you look on that stalk and you're going to get ears. And you look on them ears and you're going to get hundreds of grains of corn on many ears from one seed. Seedonomics is not economics. Too many Christians are living in economics. Where's that money going? What's in it for me? If you're asking that question, nothing. I can answer that for you right now. Just go ahead and get that out of the way. If you're asking that question, there ain't nothing in it for you. Keep your money in your wallet where thieves can break through and steal and rust can corrupt and moths can eat. Amen? But if you want to lay your treasure in heaven where moths can't eat it, thieves can't steal it, rust can't corrupt it, I can help you with that. Amen? If you want to give and watch other people 
do like this lady did right here this morning. Say, she said, I want it all. I just want it all. God, give it, give me all you got. If you want to watch these testimonies like this, you want to hear about a man set free, a woman healed by the power of God of brain issues, lay up treasure in heaven because God's reaching the lost. They're coming by the droves from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. They're coming in to find Jesus at an altar. I want to make an altar bigger. I want to make the prayer room bigger. I want to make the choir bigger. I want to make the property bigger. I want to make the parking lot bigger. I want to make the seats bigger. I want to make space for God to bring the hurting, the broken, the downtrodden, the depressed, the suicidal, the lost, the, the wayward, the prodigals. Come on to Jesus. There's room at the cross for you. Stand to your feet with me today. Hallelujah. It's about trust. They sung that song. I cried to the Lord. Woo! I called on the Lord. I prayed to the Lord. And he heard. And he answered. I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. Some trust in chariots and horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. We trust hospitals. We trust doctors. We trust medicine. We trust banks. We trust lawyers. We trust people in the world system that will let you down. Don't put your trust in religion. Don't put your trust in a man. Don't put your trust in a denomination. Don't put your trust in something man-made. Put your trust in God. How many of you pushed your shopping cart out to your car this week and looked down in it and looked at the total on your register tape and said, oh my Lord. You just don't get much for that. Groceries are up, gas is up, morality's down, our world is changing, everything's costing more, the dollar's worth less, but God, He never changes. His economy is booming, His price has never gone up. Just give him your whole heart, full and free, and he will bless your life in more ways than you can imagine. It's not about money. It's about a heart. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen? Don't you love the Lord? Isn't God fun? Sing a little bit of that same song if you got it. Oh, the one who will never fail. He, he will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God. Woo! I trust you, Lord. My Savior, My Savior I trust. Oh, don't you love that? Jesus, Jesus is, is mine. mine. And he's been my fourth man in the fire. Time after time after time after time after time. Yes. Born of his spirit. Born of the spirit. Washed in his blood. Glory to God. In what he did for <laughs> Already gave me more. That's what's in it for me. Calvary's in it for me. That's what's in it for me. Salvation. Free. Full. Deliverance. Hope. Peace. Trust in God.
Lord, we turn our hearts to you. We open our hearts to you. Take more of me, God. Take more of me so that I can have more of you. More of you. More of you in this house. More of you in my heart. More of you in my life. More of you in my finances. More of you, God. In my way. In my heart. In my hope.
to you today we know that the condition of our world is not a money problem the world doesn't need more banks more loans better numbers in Wall Street the condition we need to address here in this room and across our land and all around the world is a heart condition Touch our hearts. Give us hearts to give, hearts to serve, hearts to vote, hearts to stand up, hearts to be strong, hearts to pray, hearts to love, hearts with hope of a better future than our past, hearts that will cause us to lean into you and not shy away, to trust enough to let go. It's a heart thing. We know that the heart can be deceitfully wicked and slip things by us that we don't recognize and realize. But you are the Lord of our heart. You are greater than our heart. And you can touch our heart and write with your gentle finger and your pen of love. You can write on our hearts a love story right on our hearts the law of love the perfect law of liberty we receive it we hear you we know you've heard us now touch our hearts make them whole again and we give you everything and such as we have we will give to a hurting world. We declare it and decree it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. 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 I pray and I trust that your heart is renewed, that your heart is restored, and that you hear and listen and obey this week in whatever God leads you to do. Do it with all of your might. Parents, if you would rush out to get your children out of the old chapel and uh, sign them out so that we can keep our security in order. If you are attending the Pathways class as a part of our leadership or a new member at the river, you're dismissed.